Good evening YouTube, my name is Jay and welcome back to episode 13 of this series and in this episode we're going to be looking at some unfortunate news when it comes to a lot more layoffs which were just recently announced over the last couple of weeks and it's not looking too good for 2024 when it comes to these layoffs in the game industry but more on that in just a little bit. Along with that some good wins for the NFT side of things, a resurgence to the popular browser game which we will show you later and of course a couple of other games and a very interesting albeit slightly weird game which I'm not sure why I covered but we will do it anyway anyway on with the show I'll see you on the flip side Currently in the gaming industry, the global tally for layoffs are estimated to be over 10,000 for the year 2023. Due to mass global economic decline, currency in many developed nations becoming weak, ever increasing costs of personal and living and business operation expenses, and fewer investors willing to take risks in the gaming industry. Sadly, it is looking more and more like these trends will continue into 2024. Here's hoping something will turn that around, but as more major gaming companies push for gaming as a service, it is becoming more and more difficult for developers to maintain control over products and investors. So let's cover a round of layoffs I missed in December. At a meeting late November, the decision to lay off half of League of Geeks production staff was made to take effect early December. League of Geeks is an independent Australian game development company based out of Melbourne that was founded back in 2011. Until recently, they had roughly 31 employees on the payroll, the largest of indie gaming companies in Australia, but after the layoffs took effect, they now are down to 17 staff. It may not sound like many in the grand scheme of things, like later on in this section, but this is gutting another studio. The studio worked on titles such as Armello, released back in 2015, and has overwhelming positive reviews from players on Steam. The studio also won Studio of the Year back in 2020 during the Australian Game Development Awards. For the last three years, they have been working hard on two major pet projects, but which sadly are now paused indefinitely due to the recent layoffs to save another project. Jump Light Odyssey is the game on hold and possibly may be cancelled, and Salium Inferum, a remake of the 2009 game, which seems to be still in the making. Trent Custer's co-founder and studio director said, it was just a financial logic puzzle to choose Salium Salium Infernum over Jump Light Odyssey. Now coming into 2024, wide-scale redundancies were made warming up the cold month of January for what seems to be another upsetting year in game development. But hey, profits will be okay, right? Right off the bat we have Boza Studios laying off a third of its staff, leaving 40 remaining, which was approximately 20 employees losing their livelihoods. Next, an Australian indie publisher Versus Evil closed its doors after settling a legal dispute with its parent company Tiny Build. Embracer Group, which owns Gearbox, which has axed many employees in the past as they scooped up many studios, announced more layoffs at Gearbox and another studio they own, 3D Realms. No official numbers were reported, but after some scouring and some articles online, it is safe to estimate approximately 150 or so were let go across the studios. Now onto the bigger boys. Twitch, a streaming website I use multiple times a week to bring you my own amazing insightful chats from entertainment to education and plenty of gaming along the way has axed 500 of its employees which equates to about 35% of its total staff. Remember Amazon owns Twitch which is also due to cut off Korea soon from its services to lower the operation costs. Twitch last year laid off around 400 employees so that's around 900 people let go in total over two rounds of layoffs. According to an article on Aftermath an employee was quoted as saying, no idea how folks are going to make it work after many teams have been halved, which means fewer support and feature slowdown. Twitch has been rolling out multiple new systems lately, so we will need to see how these layoffs are going to affect the streaming giant. 
Now coming to Discord, the community app I personally also use to help me communicate with my community and bring announcements and create a safe space and fun place for people to chill out and talk to. They announced 17% reduction in headcount, which is 170 people. Their CEO said the company grew too quickly. Something cited last year when some big tech companies took on extra people due to the higher reliance on their systems during COVID when everyone stayed at home. Discord are offering a generous severance package, however, so at least there is that. If you guys can all remember the few news stories we made a few months ago regarding the Unity engine and its crazy new policies regarding install costs, thankfully most of which were reverted and the CEO John Riccicello was fired. Not only was the move condemned across the internet, but also saw a mass exodus of developers from wanting to use its systems at all. It should be of no surprise though, they let go 25% of its staff as the company continues a reset whatever the hell that means. Now we may have had small numbers to this point, but throw in 1800 people losing their livelihoods and you can see how the layoffs are already starting to add up. Anyone who has done the math and it's only over midway through January, that's over 26% of what was laid off in 2023. That's over 2600 employees let go from all discipline levels what a stark reminder that winter is still here and many more could be let go in the year ahead. Hey guys, if I can ask for a favor, most of you who watch my YouTube channel are not yet subscribed or press the like button. Trust me, it will help me out more than you know and I aim to earn it. So please hit the like button to help the YouTube algorithm to promote my videos into the future and to see more gaming content and yours truly. Thank you for your time and your support. Now, on with the episode. Well, let's bring on some feel-good news, shall we? Well, last week, Elon Musk's ex, or as we still call it, Twitter, announced it will be discontinuing the shitty NFT profile photos. This is a massive win for the collapse of an online currency nobody wanted. And I say currency lightly. Some major companies such as Sony were going all on in with the NFT, but blows like this should be enough to set NFTs in their place, which of course is in the card graveyard. I think Opera GX accounts set it up quite well. Along with this news, GameStop announced its closure of the NFT marketplace, which they opened up two years ago. Most people did not even know about this. And sure, this site, this is due to some continuing regulatory uncertainty of the crypto space, but heck, they had no problem trying to cash in on this two years ago. Either way, gamers rejoice. Another nail in the coffin for the NFT bros. This one is for all of you 90s and noughties kids out there that loved playing browser games because more feel good news as Neopets could be heading in a new and interesting direction. That's right, it's time to dust off my Neopets account which I haven't used since probably around 2002. Now, what is Neopets, you might ask? It is a beloved and long-lived virtual pet game with a bunch of community mini-games played through your web browser, originally on consoles, later. With the whole point of bringing care to your custom virtual pet. Released on November 15th, 1999, the game achieved almost instant success and was logging over 600,000 views per day by Christmas. That's within 40 days after release. The game was eventually sold to Viacom and branded as Nickelodeon's Neopets in 2005 and made the move from web browser gaming to cross console gaming. Nearly 24 years later, after several inner company scandals being bought and sold to several companies and at least one major security breach, 
Neopets still has an impressive following of around 100,000 daily average site views in 2020, which is the latest stat we could find. And now as of July, it has yet another new owner and with a new vision to modernize and revamp the game for a whole new generation. The new owner, Dominic Law, mentioned a focus on a total overhaul of functionality of the base game, fixing and modernizing the long broken issues such as minigames for in-game currency that no longer work due to requiring Adobe to operate. You know, flash browser stuff, guys. I know, right? And a working mobile-friendly version of Neopets. Yay! And I mean that sincerely, guys, not sarcastically. Yay! Possible spin-off or sequel games and taking an example from the mouse, Nikki that is, in merchandising, merchandising, merchandising! The idea of physical merchandise that comes with access to an in-game downloadable content has been floated as possible new sources of revenue. The introduction of World of Neopets with a tentative release date of the 2024 sales year, which will be a 3D simulator game that uses the original Neopets world, but in an immersive 3D open world format as well as potential trading cards and games and other licensing deals. This could be a great future for Neopets. Yay, Neopets! So yeah, this happened. It is a real thing. I am for reals, you guys. Alex Jones, the conspiracy theorist and loud mouth poster boy for toxic, insecure men, the globe over, release a video game on January the 3rd to Steam. What is the game called? No one asked me, but I am going to tell you anyway. It's Alex Jones' New World Order Wars, of course. What kind of game is it? No, I'm seriously asking you guys. I, I'm not quite sure. But after looking at several trailers, playthroughs, live streams, and reading descriptions and articles on this game, our lovely writer Matt of this piece still hasn't a clue what he was looking at. But here goes nothing. The game appears to be a 2D retro side-scrolling shooter with the main controllable character being a Rambo-esque combat operative trying to take down the New World Order and its goons from destroying Alex's America. Each level appears to feature a hot and edgy take on one or more of Alex Jones' conspiracy theory. And we get all of his greatest hits like the 2015 THEY TURNED THE FUCKING FROGS GAY! And you also see Trump as Superman. Hmm. A vaccine that kills more people than the virus. New wave Corona jams Jones and beyond. There's no end to the fear mongering. Hmm. No end at all. I wondered though, if the sales from this game go to Jones before he has to pay those debtors after losing all those civil cases recently, or if it just goes right to them. Either way, shameless cash grab to avoid having to actually deal with reparations for the damage he's done to so many over the years. As for the buy it versus don't buy it, well, this is like the Hogwarts Legacy game on crack levels of questionable, I guess. Buy it, personally, no. No, I wouldn't. Buy it out of principle, mostly, okay. That, and Alex's voice is almost a whole thing and I can't stand the man's voice honestly. But did I consider buying it, you might ask? Yes. Yes, I did. It looks hilarious, and though I know it's not intended to be hilarious to certain people that will rush out to buy this game, you really have to hand it to Alex Jones. He really knows how to sell himself out, and when you think he sold out the last of what he had left, he just finds more to sell and make bank off it. Like a true modern day snake oil salesman. God bless the American dream. After a long time away from the spotlight, the Prince of Persia series is back in a 2D adventure reminiscent of the original games. Yes, guys, before the Sands of Time adventures. In this new adventure, you follow Sargon as he tries to rescue the kidnapped Prince of Persia. The game offers deep combat loops, plenty of platforming in a Metroidvania-styled classic. Will you be climbing up the mountain? Summit it on PC and all consoles, bar the Switch, already out since January 18th. Holy shit, Joel. 
Surprise. Hey, hey! Part 2 to such an extraordinary game is coming back remastered with The Last of Us Part 2. Although this game has had a very mixed reception for reasons I won't go into right here, it is following a remaster like Part 1 did last year. Part 2 seems more reasonably priced compared to the fiasco placed on Part 1 when Sony was trying to get the full price. It will feature graphical improvements, although there's not really much to improve on as it already looked really good back then, but there are some minor improvements I suppose. A new roguelike survival mode called No Return, which does sound interesting, and the ability to explore early development of three new levels. Two girls, one, uh, game? Coming to PS5 on January 19th. Pokemon and guns? What is going on with this game? Pal World Early Access is a Pokemon, I mean Pocket Monster, I mean monster catching survival and crafting game that incorporates mechanics from multiple other games to craft a new experience. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So let's get those battles going on. And remember, you just gotta catch them all. Oh, God, oh, God damn it. Get it on Steam or Xbox on January 19th. <laughs> Welcome back to the end of the segment. I hope you enjoyed the episode, guys, and I will have to love you and leave you there. But until next time, you know what to do. Feel free to check the links down below. If you want to see more of me, come check me out on my Twitch gaming as well. And check my other links if you want to see more of me on my other social medias. But until then, guys, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And I will see you all very, very soon. Slancha.